everything. My name is Marta Jorge. I am from Barcelona, and I am working with the Barcelona International Committee Group. Uh, and well, the, I, I was very, I was quite involved in the elaboration of an ethical code. So I know a little bit of it. Do you want to continue? Okay. Can you use a microphone, please? Yes. <laughs> feels a little bit like in karaoke right now. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Szymon, I'm from Warsaw, Poland. I'm a member of an uh, urban movement called Cities Hours. And, uh, and something else I need to add? No. Okay. I'm Giorgio from Barcelona. I'm a physicist and I'm mainly interested in the education. Uh, education. Hi, I am Veronika. I'm from Kraków, Poland, from a Common City Association. Um, being familiarized with the topic, um, I know some things about crowdfunding, <laughs> um, but I'm also interested in how you and in other organizations, how do how do you develop this code of ethics and. I'm Debbie, I'm from New York City, and I know very little about crowdfunding, and which is I'm interested in, but also specifically interested in the code of ethics as a kind of a foundational document for a responsive political organization, responsive to the community. I'm Tom Stokes, I'm from Dublin, Ireland. Um, I'm involved with the Right to Water campaign, which is almost victorious now and the right to change political movement that came out of that and with setting up a, a, a national online uh, press to challenge the right-wing media hegemony and we will be involving crowdfunding in that so that's that's why i'm here and and the code of ethics of course Hi, I'm Zimkita. I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. I work for an organization called the Funugwazi. Hi, I'm Manu. I'm French, but I'm living in Barcelona. I'm not involved in any political project, but I don't know much about code of ethics and crowdfunding. I wanted to learn a bit more and find it. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm from Jönköping, Sweden. Uh, I'm involved in a social center in shopping, and I know very little about this topic, but I'm excited to learn more. Hi, my name is Johan. I'm from the same city in Sweden, in the same social center, uh, and I am curious about the code of ethics, how you can gather uh, a lot of people can, uh, yeah, uh, come under uh, the same like set of values. I'm Tim. I'm also from Jönköping, Sweden, in the social center. Um, yeah, and I'm also curious about how to make uh, like a code of ethics that isn't uh, created by like a small group to involve people, so people together can set their agenda for a movement or yeah. Morning, I'm Sergi Escribano from Valencian Comú, who is going to present uh, an experience, and also promoter of uh, Commons Policy Initiative, which is trying to, uh, it's an initiative which is trying to create a dialogue between the municipalist uh, platforms here in Spain and the French-speaking countries in Europe. Uh, hello, I'm Neus from Valencian Comú. I think the code of ethics because I'm working in in the Council of Valencia as a political staff. So I think this workshop is going to be oh, it's going to bring more light in our in our staff in Valencia. Uh, well, I'm Albert from San Esteban Sarrubiras, a little town from near here, and I'm from Podemos and I. I'm um, a member of the Council of San Esteban Sarubiras and about ethics and code of ethics, uh, I know something, but from the 
practical point of view, <laughs> not theoretical. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Guy Janssen. I'm from Brussels. Um, we have a movement that we just started, a citizens' movement, that is called We Brussels. Um, we have copied your code of ethics, and uh, <laughs> uh, we have started working on it. We have uh, a few suggestions already because I think at this moment it's very important to uh, do it with everybody else so that it will change. It will change, but I think. The concepts that are in there are fantastic, and it happens to happen at the same time as our. There is a commission from the Brussels Parliament that has uh, set up a code of ethics for uh, every every politician, and it's not even 10% of what is in the code of ethics uh, that we aspire to. So it's a very very strong tool to go out and say, look, this is what your government is proposing, and this is what we are proposing. We are making copyleft uh, politics uh, here. So it's op open source uh, politics. So it's great that you copy that. Um, well, my name is uh, Laura, and uh, I am the secretary of municipalism in Podemos. And well, I'm going to start the workshop today. And first of all, oh, w uh, welcome to this workshop that we have called Code of Ethics and Crowdfunding. Uh, in this workshop, we will talk about term limits, salaries, and accountability. Um, it will also teach us how to crowdsource our foundings uh, in order to, to keep our candidacy independent from banks and independent from uh, big businesses. And well, our main goal today is to draw up a code of ethics, and we will do it with a participatory methodology. And I would like to place the emphasis on this participatory method and the fact that, they will ha that uh, we will have a code of ethics as a result of our collaboration today. And I think this will be very hel uh, helpful and useful for all of us. We will share not only our knowledge, but also our experiences. And I guess we all agree that, it, that uh, this is the best thing to do it and, and the best way to work. Also, this uh, workshop uh, will help us develop networks and partnerships and getting to know uh, each other. Well, I will start with my, um, with my experience with my own experience in this field called well in this field uh, ethics and politics. I will explain um, only one of my experiences, uh, a little experience um, sorry. Uh, well, um, I've, I have chosen uh, this experience because you can see two ways of facing the same fact. Uh, well, my name is uh, Laura Ava, as I have already said. I'm a biologist, a, a scientist, and I work as a teacher. I began in municipalism when I moved to the town uh, where I live uh, now. It's uh, Sant Esteves es Rubiras. It is a small, uh, a beautiful small village near here, near Barcelona. I moved uh, there in 2010, 2011, and you know 2011 is the year of the Spanish Revolution, the year of millions of people uh, taking the squares, as we uh, used to say, the year of millions of people um, shouting loud and clear that uh, they don't represent us. Those words, they don't represent us, uh, that slogan and, and motto has uh, to do um, with ethics or rather with the lack of ethics of some of our politicians. Um, it has to do not only with the political decisions, with the policies that they were carrying out, but also uh, had to do with uh, the way of doing politics. In that very moment, we were building a candidacy for the municipal elections. And nowadays, I am a town uh, councillor of Sant Esteves es Rovires, and I am also the, the secretary of municipalism in Podemos, Catalonia. These uh, six years of experience has taught me a lot of things, and many of uh, them are uh, related to the topics we are going to deal with today. 
Um, I'm sure that uh, anyone who has experience in politics has something to say about ethics, about uh, doing what you promised, about dealing with uh, corruption, so I'm not an, an exception. I, well, I have to say that uh, two years ago uh, we reached the government we were very excited, as we could do so many things that we wanted to do, such as re municipalization, uh, fighting water privatization, participatory politics, and some other things. We had a lot of plans. Uh, well, I have to say that our candidacy made uh, a pact, a deal, of uh, government with other candidacies uh, in order to govern, in order to, to be in power, because we weren't enough people to, to, to govern, to, to rule alone. But uh, we were the second group in government. But, uh, well, unfortunately, uh, that didn't long as much, and we are, well, I will explain why. Uh, we were proud of having a code of uh, ethics, a kind of uh, rights and duties uh, list, a way of group um, um, decision making, but our partners, the other candidacy, uh, didn't have a code of ethics, and uh, that made a very big, big difference. In fact, I, I guess they, had a, they, they didn't have ethics at all, or not only a code, and I say this because uh, we quit government when my colleague uh, discovered an issue of corruption of the previous government and our partners, uh, the other party, wanted to, to shut up and told us not to um, uncover just in case we need it uh, in, in the future. I mean, we needed the councils uh, involved in that issue of corruption uh, in the future. Uh, we have no dilemma because we had already a code of ethics. We have uh, thought about it before. We wrote the code of ethics. So as you can imagine, we didn't shut up. So the reaction of the other candidacy uh, was to expel my colleague from the government. The major did it and form alliance with, this, with those uh, corrupt politicians in order to, to remain in, in power. And I say corrupt politicians because we know and we can prove it, that, and they know that we know, that they, well, I'm not going to say the word I have in mind because it's a hard word, but I can say that a, they earn illegally 100,000 euros, and well, in a town of only 7,000 um, inhabitants, you know, and well, they did some of the things, but I don't have any time to explain it. But uh, well, now we are in the opposition and we are proud of it. Uh, we are working hard, we are making politics in a different way that would uh, make us really proud. And they, they the other candidacy and the other uh, councillors are really nervous because uh, they couldn't shut us up. We, we didn't sit back and do nothing, so uh, that um, they soon have to face justice. So I can say that in some way we were fearless. Uh, so in my experience, uh, municipalism and new politics has to do with being honest, uh, with moving from words to, to facts, and being consistent and, and consequent, and also fearless. Because being honest in politics today, I think that uh, means so many times um, not, not only being fearless, but brave. We, have to, we may be, be afraid, but we have to face, the, the, um, to face fear because we have to do it. And well, we have, uh, we have two options, face the fear or, uh, or the dark side. You know, fear is the path to the dark side, as you just said. So, well, that's uh, what we have to achieve today. Not a panacea, but a collective solution um, that will help us find this new, new way, new form of doing politics. Um, well, I'm going to explain, um, I'm going to briefly explain the methodology today. We have, um, we have these pieces of paper to write down some information. And, well, we have already done the presentations. And my partners, uh, well, 
they are going to introduce themselves uh, later. Um, we have uh, divided, we will split the, um, the, um, the workshop today in three, um, three parts. First of all, we have the code of ethics, what should be included. Uh, it will be done by Yolanda. Uh, secondly, we have a fundraising, how to get the money. Uh, Susie will do that part. And um, the last uh, part, it will be economic and organic accountability, how you get it. Uh, it will be Miguel's turn. And our partners, they will introduce themselves later, will make an introduction to each part. And at the end of each section, we will work together to, to expand, improve, and, and participate in the elaboration of, the, um, of each part of the document. Um, they will explain it better in detail, how we can do it with some post-its and well, they will explain. And then each uh, speaker will sum up the conclusions of each field and they will collect uh, your contributions uh, with the initial proposal that they will explain uh, with the post-its and they will watch the lags between uh, the post-its, your proposals and their ideas I really already prepared. And uh, last but not least, we'll, we'll have a debate, a uh, discussion, and the result will be a co-created document, which is the best way to, of doing things, uh, in my, from my point of view, to do it in, in common. And now, without further ado, let me introduce you to Yolanda, and she's going to explain her part. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Yolanda. I'm from Barcelona and Comú. I joined um, the organization halfway through the movement. And I'm gonna, um, I mean, I'm the president of the guarantee committee and also member of the organization committee. So one of my <laughs> specializations is the code of ethics. I'm gonna try to explain you in what is this the main object if of this workshop. So this is the very core of the new way how to change politi politics nowadays. And also for us, is, it was the key for to, to gather all the parties and make the collation and also to make a contract or a commitment with the citizens, with the, with the people of our cities. It was a key part. So you should take care of this, like very carefully think through and, and try to make the, um, the most of it. So what is a code of ethics? Code of ethics is um, the document that you, you establish the concrete goals, the rules of conduct, best practices, and concrete measures in order to in order to, sorry, <laughs> to set which is the accepted conduct in politicians. So you have to, um, to make the organization and people uh, who are, sorry, I'm just a bit nervous. Um, and this, sorry, this measure has to be adapted and and accepted by the organization itself and also the people who is elected and appointed by the organization into the institutions. So there are like three main areas that at least for our point of view, we have to face and address. First of all was the democracy, democratization of the political representation because you know, the traditional way you gave your vote and they're not listening to us any, anymore. So we try to make concrete measures in order to make them to listen to us, to, to compliance with the commitments to the uh, electoral programs. The second big area is the um, transparency, financing, and expenditure uh, management in ruled by ethic principles. This is like very key from our point of view. And the third big area 
is um, to professionalize the politicians itself in order to eliminate mm, all the privileges that they are uh, used to <laughs> and also to prevent corruption. I mean, this is something more. Um, that's why, I mean, we have to um, go to the extra mile uh, in order to, to set the new ethics and the new way how to make politicians. I mean, this is not ac acceptable any longer what they are used to do it uh, in a traditional way. So now what we thought is like maybe it would be good for you to think about which would be the ideal characteristic of a code of ethics because you can make it like, for example, general or very specific. For example, in our point of view, <laughs> we haven't got enough time to do it like in a particular and in detailed way. So later on, we have developed a regulation from the code of ethics. And, and also you should think, or you have to think about the um, key elements, the key factors. And then we are gonna give you some posits. You can think about or discuss between little groups, two people or something. After five minutes, I will gather all your ideas and we will put it in order. And after that, we will discuss and I'm gonna try to explain our experience. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, good morning. My name is Susie. I'm from Valencia in Comú. Um, and I've been uh, working in the, in the citizen platform from the beginning. And um, I, uh, from the beginning, I've been in the financial uh, working group, in the financial committee. Uh, then I spent like around six months uh, in the coordination committee and uh, well my, my main contribution I think uh, was in the financial field. That's why um, I came here to the workshop just to uh, contribute with my knowledge and experience um, about uh, all, all this field, the financial part. So as my colleague said, um, uh, we just want to uh, create, co-create a document all together uh, and now they are giving you the deposit. So um, if um, the thing is uh, just to uh, write down uh, the, character the characteristics and the key factors that you think that a uh, code of ethics uh, has to, uh, needs to have and also uh, think about uh, which are the characteristics of a financial system, that it's uh, the way that you get the fund uh, uh, to be able to do the electoral campaign. So think about also which characteristic needs to have a financial system related also with a co code of ethics and uh, which will be the Q factors? What do you think will be the Q factors of a financial system uh, needs to cover? So. so well, hi, my name is uh, Miguel Ongil. Um, well, I, I spent 12 years uh, abroad. I was actually living in, in Brussels where the 15M Indignados uh, started. Uh, I was participating there and uh, also in the, the international uh, network. Uh, Maria Granate started later, other, other things. And I started a, a sort of a collective a campaign uh, in 2012 that was called Cuentas Claras, like uh, clear accounts. So it was uh, specifically looking into the the, the po in political party founding. Uh, and I, I have been since then very interested in all the, le the links uh, between money and politics. And later, well, with this campaign, well, we had some accomplishments. Uh, the, the law was actually changed, uh, taking into consideration that in, in the Spanish case, the political uh, parties owe altogether 200 millions to the banks. They are like, uh, there have been more than 10 uh, political parties that have been in red numbers for long years. So we have uh, been saying that uh, political, uh, financial dependencies create a political dependency in a, in, a, 
in a time where we have a bank crisis, uh, maybe those parties were not in the position to actually uh, put through measures against uh, banks. Also, the slash funds and uh, dirty money in politics has been a constant uh, uh, issue in the Spanish politics in the last 30, 40 years. Uh, all the main parties have had these uh, things. And so we start looking into uh, solutions. So first, I, I think my, my profile is in a way I, I've uh, come from protest, uh, protesting to proposing with this campaign, also a book. I also appear before the Constitutional Committee in the Spanish Parliament. Uh, then Podemos uh, came about, and then they hired me to do all the, the, tra the transparency and founding uh, stuff. And so uh, I, they told me, well, uh, are you capable of <laughs> uh, actually producing what you say the parties need uh, to do? And now, uh, since 2015, I'm a member of the parliament in the, in the regional parliament of uh, Madrid. So that's why maybe I have all the cycle from protesting, proposing, actually uh, doing something different in political parties, and then uh, now trying to do the same thing in the institutions. Uh, I will do the, the accounting, uh, accountability uh, part. Uh, is uh, also part of the ethics, is part of uh, uh, how you actually uh, uh, will show or answer uh, that you are actually compliant with all these uh, ethical compromises uh, that uh, you have. No? And in this uh, methodology, well, we didn't want to start by telling all our experience. We hope that uh, you bring first your ideas, what you think is more important, and that's why we are collecting all the deposits. And then later on, maybe we can tell you more about uh, our experience of uh, each one and how we have solved some things or how we haven't solved uh, other issues. In the terms of uh, accountability, maybe think what is the, uh, uh, how elected members, for instance, must be accountable once elected, how the internal workers must be elected to, uh, to the project, uh, how people uh, appointed in the institutions uh, as a workers must be also uh, accountable. There is also a legal accountability as a political party where you need to, to have a tax and legal uh, obligations. And, and also, what, are, what is your accountability towards the, the public and the, the big uh, electorate? No? Um, and also, <coughs> in which uh, measures uh, you can have, a transparency portal or other things. No? And we'll uh, talk more about uh, that uh, later and also maybe uh, things uh, in particular to prevent uh, corruption or internal controls and things uh, like that. Okay, so maybe we start. Yes, uh, well, just my, my uh, little presentation on Juan Romero. Um, I'm former member to Cuentas Claras too. Uh, um, social movement uh, that we, when we, um, uh, you know, do some research and some protest and proposal about uh, how to, how a party has to finance, and also member of Open Croatia, uh, it's open government and in, in Esperanto. It's a, another uh, association that's working on open data and open government paradigm. So, but I don't want to 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 uh, stand so much. The point is, as we do, if if you can uh, take a couple of minutes to to think. What uh, what characteristic are important for color ethics, or you know the th the three subjects we have choose? Then we make a, a debate with us, and I have an open uh, document uh, our our um, project. So the ones who have a laptop could, could open too, because uh, I think we can start uh, growing um, filling that, that that document. So. so <coughs> Okay, just for things, I'm Timo from Barcelona and Comú. Uh, I'm in the beginning of the candidacy, the very from the beginning, so I have all the, of the picture from the beginning. We were poor, <laughs> we, we don't have money, we, we don't have a code of ethics, and so we have, we have built all, all, the, all the candidacy from the beginning till now, so we, we, we have grown very fast. And I will just try to, I will be, I will try to, to write down all the 
with with the rest of the of the panels all the document that Juan was commenting. The idea is create an open document that you will take to your cities, so you can make it grow with your partners, and in this and in this way you can develop it. At, at in the future you can you know get some feedback from us, and in the other way around because at the end a code of ethics is a code of ethics. I mean you, we you, we cannot invent a, a wheel about this, no. So it's we can just make it something like this. So. Just one thing about the posits. Write down, uh, if you can, we have three categories. So try to use, I mean, one posit for each category. Otherwise, it will be confusing. If you can, otherwise, we, we will split it. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Accountability, financial system, and uh, um, code of ethics. If you want, take some minutes, talk with your partners, and we, and we, and we start. Uh, one thing, guys. No, yo creo que vamos bien, pero el, el, el tema diferencial le piden que igual no me da una nueva contabilidad política y sí. económica. Eh, guys, so, sorry, sorry, just, just a detail. Um, when we talk about uh, accountability, it is important of the, of the economical one, where you, of the money you have in, or your cash flow, but also the political accountability. How, how you, uh, how is your government's governance, how you take uh, decisions, with what material and that. So think in, in that two ways. Guys, are you ready? Uh, we are gonna start to collect the posit and just okay. You can still think, thi you can still uh, thinking, but if you have something, we are start to collecting just to to be operative. So if you have. Hi everybody, maybe we can start, please be quiet. Excuse me, do you mind? We are going to carry on. <laughs> okay, perfect. So here in the ethic codes, we gather some idea, like really good ideas, but I think, I know it's quite difficult to thinking in a specific measurements. First of all, I want to, um, to think about the characteristic that that document should have. I mean, one of the things should be general or specific. The first commitment, what you're gonna do with the um, citizens, and it's really, really difficult and it took a lot of time to m implement that ideas and think about this measurable is possible. So probably you can choose between a general um, code of ethics and after that doing the regulation and takes more time to think about this. Um, the second characteristic is should be sort of mandatory, mandatory or, or a contract between the organization itself all the elected members and the appointment members to public office and also with the citizens as well. I mean, this is something more than the electoral program that everybody makes lots of promises, but you know, at the end of the day, if they don't uh, comply with those um, promises, nothing happens. So another characteristic of the ethic um, code, it should be um, under evaluation because we have to measure if we have accomplished our goals, how is implemented, uh, how the people from the organization and also for the institutions are complying with all these 
um, measures and procedures and best practices that we, we aim to reach in order to change the, the political new way of doing things. So this, I, I think this is the main things of the characteristic. Um, it has to be concise as well, I mean. Sorry. <laughs> so from here, we kind of start to think about the key elements or key factors that we should implement. For example, here, someone has put uh, writing down like transparency, should be transparent. Is anybody able to think about one of the measures about what um, should be transparency? Beyond the, you know, the financial aspects and the accountability? Okay, no, <laughs> never mind, but <laughs> you're right as well. But for example, we yeah, should implement <laughs> some ideas, for example, in order to, to the institutions uh, to, to publish um, the, the income statement of each of the politicians before they start. Um, and, and also to, to, to be able to know if they have committed some um, uh, corruption things and all of the sudden with a normal or average salary they are become rich people so how you are going to control this I mean we should ask about publicity they should at first when they accept the, um, the elected post or the appointed post they should um, publish uh, but it has to be voluntary I mean the law are not um, compulsory in that aspect. And also, for example, what about the agendas of the politicians? Sometimes, <laughs> at least before, in previous years, we saw pff, our Congress, half of the um, deputados, they were just no, de no there, they were somewhere else, or just playing. It's like, come on, you have to, to do your job. That's why we pay you. And also, for example, Mm. What about the um, contractual criteria to, to the, um, the contracts of the appointment people? Um, so you, there's a lot of things that you can think about in order to be transparent in another way, not just in the financial and accountability aspects. So around here, I just noticed like two people have expressed like, you know, they should promote gender equity. So I totally agree, but I think uh, the code of ethics is not the right place where to do. I mean, your organization has to set or establish all the values, the principles, but as the organization, I mean, it's beyond this. But now we are just looking and making the, um, the focus in just the ethics, how they have to um, behave, the politicians, how to democratize, um, and also about the transparency and accountability. It's in, it should be in another area, in like in your principles as an organization. And there's a lot of things like no just diversion, diversity, um, gender equity, uh, participation, is a lot of them, no? And also, okay. Um, and also, you should uh, think about how about the resignation um, processes. And we are able to um, to make an impeachment or to to force that that person will be dismissed if they are not uh, complying with the commitments or they are breaching the contract that they have made with us as well. Oh, for example, what about to limit salaries? What to do with the excess of these salaries? How we are gonna um, choose? Um, what we are gonna do with those salaries? Uh, for example, in Barcelona and Comun, uh, we we have thought about this like really thoughtful, and and for example, we have to put in place a project called Afiladora. 
sorry, I have no idea how is the name. Yeah. Or maybe you can. No, no. No. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, <coughs> just, I was just check all the all the posits, and more or less all the things that are written down are are really fine. It's, it's like this. I will just. I think it's important, uh, in my opinion, um, focus as if you want to do something general or something concrete, and you in your organizations have to value that. Of if you make something general, maybe first of all it will be easier easier to make. <laughs> it, it's, not, it's important because you're at the beginning of the, no, as some of you say before, uh, you are creating a tool to, commit to gather people around, around something, a code of ethics will, I think it were you, no? Or, I don't know. Uh, but you, are, you, 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 you will use the, the code of ethics as a tool to get people around the, the project. So if you get something general, it will be easier to make some the main part of the people around because if it's something particular, maybe I will say, no, I don't know, maybe 2,500 euros as a salary limit is too much or it's too, ma it's, it's too less. So maybe it's important to get something general and then afterwards with an organization more uh, grown, mature, I don't know, make up uh, later regulations, kind of reglament, no, I don't know, uh, kind of reglamento, I don't know if it's, there's regulation, yeah code uh, more specific. Then, uh, uh, this is our opinions, or this is how we, our experience is. So maybe uh, as, uh, the gender agenda, it hasn't to be, in a, it, it is not in our code of ethics, but if you think it has to be, it's fine. I mean, it's, I think it's very fine, and all, I, there is nothing that, that it's not uh, missing. Uh, it's about Philadora that says it's, other, other thing that is important is that you, if you fix a, a salary limitation because you think it is political, you, you don't have to be in politics to, to get rich and all these kind of things, always you have to think in the consequences. I mean, I'm using the salary as an example, but it's the same as everything in the code of ethics. The term limits, that each decision or each thing that you will put in your code of ethics will have consequences in the future. So you have to, if you can, you have to think in, a, in that consequences. Let's put the example of Barcelona. We say that our mayor and our, and our uh, elected representatives uh, will earn just uh, 3.10 3 3 3 the minimum salary, let's say. That was like, yeah, but the minimum salary. It's 2,200 euros, 14, huh? 200, yeah. Minimum wage huh? is like really low in Spain. In, yeah, in our, in our code, in our code, it, it's rated it down to 2,200. That it's three times, it was the three times the salary, the minimum wage that in, in that or moment. But it, uh, let's say, like it's what I, I do, like this, that, that was a mistake. We write it down in the, in the, at the, at the code of ethics, and in my opinion, in my personal opinion, let's say, my opinion is that it was a mistake. Because you have 200 to 2,000 euros, write it down in a code of ethics built for all the community that was gathering a candidacy. So now you have to change that or not. But, I mean, 200, 2,000 euros, when well, you have to change it in some moment, you will have to go to the public, to the media, and say, no, now it's not 200, 2,200, it's, let's say, 3,000. 3, and it, and yeah, yeah, but for this on this, yeah, it's like this. Yeah, but which one is, is the, the minimum salary in your country? Yeah, it's almost three times the minimum salary in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> and Barcelona, you, well, you, 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 you already seen it, the prices in Barcelona are not. <laughs> uh, what about the, I, yeah, ah, okay, I was talking about the salary uh, and about the consequences and about this Philadora thing. We get a uh, surplus about the salaries because the municipality say that we could not uh, get down the salaries of our mayor because we don't have the majority at the plenary. So we have a surplus. So the question is, what can you do with that money? 
you can use it to make politics, you can use it whatever. So we make, also Podemos made a thing called Impulsa, we made, we call it La Filadora, but it's, the thing is that we have a amount of money and we have decided collectively as an organization, give it to some projects, uh, bottom up and all these things. So we make a, we, we will share with you the link and we will make all the process that organizations could apply to get that money, 15,000, uh, 15, uh, 5,000, 15,000 uh, euros and things like that. It's just an example, but it's the same with, with everything. It's just the, for instance, other thing that it was not at the post it that we thought that it's important is about the, this, the, the revocation, no, it was right enough, punishment, we'll write it here, yeah, yeah, revocation and, revocation and punishment tools. That it has to be at the, that it has to be at the code of ethics, but it's the same. Think of the consequences. Hope you cannot, an elected, maybe you cannot, or maybe in your country, yes, but you cannot, you say, okay, you are fired. So, think that you have to debate as a collective, and I, and I think it's all about, so any questions, any additions about the code of ethics? Um, one of the issues that has come up in our discussions is that um, one of the issues that has come up in our discussions is that uh, we were wondering why, uh, but this one is not working. I think this is only to record, right? This is only to record. Uh, uh, um, so the um, uh, the issue that came up was uh, why is in the code of ethics it not mentioned anywhere? that any official that knows, so the, the, the obligation to do whistleblowing um, is uh, in many code of ethics for uh, public officials, but it's not in your code of ethics. So we were wondering, this is one of the elements that uh, we have with, with officials in, and politicians in Belgium recently. They said, oh, I didn't know. But if you, if you could have known or have reasons to know, then you should have reported and should have taken action. And uh, I, I'm wondering, is there a specific reason why you have not included it in the Code of Ethics? Okay. As far as I know, um, there is not specific reason. I mean, uh, what we have considered is like, okay, there is anything or any tool that we can uh, to create a, a punishment or sensationing, sensationing um, um, regime in that respect and also I think it's something like uh, in our regulation we thought about it and we have included but you know if you committed to do um, blow whistle, whistle, whistle blowing, sorry. Um, so it should be a consequences if you don't do that so this is, I mean, something really delicate, how to treat, it's especially if you, you have to, to be with the, your national legislation. And also, so it's, it's a bit complicated. It's sometimes you have to think about if it's a step ahead and you, you're gonna have some tools or if you do that, I mean, it's not gonna be any consequences so acceptable with the legal um, aspects in your country. So, and I want to just sum up uh, with a few aspects that it should be included included in the ethic codes as well. It's like you have to to create a control and follow following up um, committee. This is essential to to control the, um, the practices of the people in the institutions and within the organization. And after that, there is, should be some resolution bodies as well, like in each um, spaces of your organization, they should have their um, specific um, resolution um, areas. They are not allowed to think about everything or to their saying. And also to create a sanction and a penalty regime. Okay, 
and a conflict resolution. Sorry. Just two, two uh, points to, to finish. Uh, Ethicos is probably the, the, the most difficult thing to, to do, just because think uh, that is your contract. Be, be aware of being so hard on putting that blood lines, because if you fail, the first thing you, you, you lose is your credibility. So it, for example, in salaries and that, it's better to have you know, even a bigger or, or a way to negotiate than to force something that you're not going to, to accomplish. And for example, one have uh, put in, I think in financial system, that only money for the program, which is idealistic uh, idea, is good, but it's, it's not feasible, it's, it's, it's a bad idea in the way that you're going to, to pay campaigns, probably uh, communications and that. So I think that probably when you are constructing your, your contingency, you are not, uh, you, you don't know all the problems you are going to find. And so try to be honest, but you know, try to don't, don't be as pure as you are never going to get <laughs> that goal. Um, and the second thing is be aware also with the mechanism to revoke people. For example, when I say, if you put a mechanism that is with the people, with you know, in, in, in big assemblies or that, it's a good thing. But you put in, in you know, in the commit committees or, or a small group of people that can revoke others, you are making a fast way to partitocracy, you know. <laughs> so that are things that as we, did, uh, we are going to talk about the key factors. No, you, you have, we have uh, talked about the, what's characteristic. Now we are going to talk about what are the normal problematics or the problems we, we found when, when, we, when we do these things. And sorry for, for the Spanish because I have a problem with the, the last version of documents, so I, <laughs> I opened uh, when we work, but we, we translate. So, the other thing, I think uh, maybe there is, on the part of our characteristics, uh, maybe there is, there is one that you, you missed from, from the previous debate. Or do you think that uh, that the one which we cover uh, uh, is are, are good? Are, are what you have in mind? More or less. Yeah? Easy. Okay. So go to to the key factors. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, wage limits. Limits. Um, I don't know if maybe Yolanda or. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, salary limits, the, the excellence, you know, if, if you put a, a cap, uh, wh wh where, where is going to go to the rest of the limit? The, the way to, to, um, to elect people and, uh, and who, is, has to, who is covered by the code of ethics and who not, maybe for technicians you say that this, this go, gets a little apart. Uh, the mechanism of uh, transparency and, and accountability, uh, the mm, man, mandato, mandates. mandates, limitation of mandates, the incompatibilities during and after uh, the mandate, and revocatories and um, um, sanction mechanisms, and we make a general um, uh, consideration about the the two different models or approaches to make a God of Ethics is to be so mm, precise, you know, with all the commas, all the details, and you have to, to do, or maybe do something more general, but with some organists that evaluate and, and um, are aware of the accomplishment of, uh, of that code. And uh, for the last part is the, the, the mechanism of uh, governance on, on participation. And you know, what kind of uh, decisions are taken by the executive, what is you take to, to assembly, and that thing. So maybe. Well, after that, we are gonna, uh, we have asked you to uh, write down in the paper all your uh, contact details, your email, and then we will uh, pass you the document that we are gonna create. So don't worry to copy every factor or every characteristic because then we are gonna send it to you, okay? Um, uh, we move on on the financial system. So uh, you, uh, you're writing down several characteristics regarding the financial system that we obviously we have already thought before, like fair, 
uh, money coming uh, money coming uh, without a string, obviously. So we want that uh, we want to be independent from banks and also from uh, business big businesses interest. Um, also, you write down uh, no donation deals with developers, non-profits who stand to win from decisions. Uh, who write this? Could, could you explain just a little bit what you said? <laughs> oh, okay. So it's just like the no strings attached. Okay. Even nonprofits who seem like they're benevolent, um, we don't want to be them, them involved in the. Yeah, it's the same idea, more or less. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, yes, my colleague is appointing uh, that uh, the donations here, obviously, the financial system needs to be um, a legally, o sea, to, to accomplish with the legally compliance. So, here in Spain, there is a law that you can, uh, you limit the donations, uh, obviously, uh, because um, this is a restriction also. Uh, to be independent from uh, big big businesses or big b interested, and also uh, to um, be according with the law. This is important also. And no, yeah. just sorry, uh, one little thing. What we did uh, in Podemos is uh, limits. Uh, first, we is in the in the bylaws. Uh, we don't have any credit for any banks, and that's important for independence, financial independence. And the second one is the the limit uh, for donations was 100,000 euros. Later, only 50,000. What we did from the beginning is to limit ourselves the limit to 10,000, so that no donation is so important, and we don't care if we lose it. Nobody has these strings. Mm -hmm. So let's gonna see if you uh, just in here uh, all the main characteristics that we thought about the uh, that a financial system needs to have, like uh, efficient financial sources. Uh, this must guarantee the citizen platform will need to enough money to afford its commitment. Obviously, if you think uh, about different finan uh, about different ways to get the money, um, you need to to um, to check that you are gonna get at least the minimum uh, funds that you need for your electoral campaign or to maintain uh, doing politics. Then another characteristic, it's able to reach your potential collaborators. Um, it's important also that um, the way or the different ways that you are gonna finan finance uh, your candidacy uh, um, reach all the collaborators or all the all persons that you think can collaborate, okay? For example, one of the key factors, if you see uh, down, it's the digital device. In our candidacy, um, not all people know uh, or has access, had an access to internet. So what we did was uh, one of the uh, ways to get found, found were uh, through crowdfunding, through our web, but also uh, we built like um, a bone. I, I'll show it to you if you want. Um, it's my, here. So we designed this and people who didn't have access to internet could buy this kind of paper saying that I, um, I donate like five, uh, 50 euros or 20 euros to the Euro candidacy. And we did two kinds of these. One that was um, like a microcredit and another one that was just a donation. So with this, we had the compromise with people who want to donate uh, money to our politi to political candidacy. Um, and like a microcredit uh, or just a donation. So people who didn't have access to internet or was old people, uh, that was quite difficult to uh, give some donation through internet or through crowdfunding had the possibility. And also did help us to arrive to all neighborhoods. 
because uh, speaking directly with the people, you arrive more and you have the possibility to explain all your, uh, your ideas, what you are gonna change, what you're gonna do, uh, the, the political change that you wanna implement when you arrive to the council. So, sorry? <laughs> Ah, ah. <laughs> so I can pass it to you. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be easy if you have it. Yeah. Um, so another characteristic: it's transparent and auditable. And auditable. Obviously, the, uh, several of you write down this idea of transparency and auditable. And auditable. Uh, make it socially responsible and coherent with your ethic code. Obviously, also, if you have write down in your ethic code uh, the, your compromise with society, that you are going to have uh, salary, uh, limited salaries, um, you should then be socially responsible also. For example, uh, one thing to be socially responsible is obviously you are going to need to open several bank accounts. Um, if you open your bank account just in a traditional bank, uh, it's not gonna be so uh, so ethic. So try to open your bank account in uh, a bank like, for example, Triodos. I don't know if you know it, that bank, but a bank that is socially responsible also, that, f that have like a principles that support some uh, social respons responsibility. Another one uh, that we mentioned it already is the legacy legally responsible with the specific laws regulating within your own country. Obviously, uh, if you have, as uh, we said before, if um, uh, we have a national law that people who give donations needs to be completely identified. We need. Uh, uh, her or his name, his surname, whatever, uh, all the ID card to identify uh, which people has donated. And then when you, um, when you declare to, well, you need to be uh, legally responsible, okay? Because the national laws are different in each country. So take care when you design the financial system to be also legally responsible. Manageable, we write down this uh, thinking about um, when you are, for example, in an electoral campaign, um, you are not uh, sure in every time where, you, where your incomes are gonna arrive. So uh, think in a way um, that you need different ways to get the money and which are quicker and which are not because you will need to uh, you will need to pay many things uh, and you need to have incomes before so manageable in the sense that uh, you need to to take in account the terms where you need to do some payments and to be found uh, at the time to do that payment Okay, so that is important also. Maybe you need to pay several things one week and you don't have enough um, income that week. So you will need to negotiate with, with your providers or with whatever uh, to be manageable that financial system. Then independent from the banks and big businesses, we have already said it. And Q factors, so uh, for our experiences, um, the digital device, as I said before, was one, um, one of the lacks that some of our potential uh, collaborators had. So we invite uh, that bone that I showed you to you. And then uh, in balance, the think of what I was saying, if you need to pay many things one week, but you don't have the enough income, so try to uh, think about different uh, financial uh, systems or ways to get the money to be able to pay all that payment in that term, okay? Expenses planning, the same thing. If, for example, you uh, need to pay a lot of things one week and you don't have enough money, maybe you will negotiate with you, your providers to uh, extend the term for pay them or just to pay the 50% and later on the, the rest of the, of the money. Um, 
low compliance, we said it also. Uh, people in charge, this is really important also. For a financial system, uh, it's necessary at least to have uh, in, your, um, in your platform someone a little bit professional in this field because it's uh, quite specific. So to warrant that you are doing correct things legally and whatever, you need also a professional, at least one or two persons professional professionalism in that, uh, in that field. Uh, staff redundancy, uh, at least not, um, not put all the responsibility in just one person. It, what happens See, just I in that month of electoral um, campaign, that person has an accident, something like that. So just try to have uh, several people, three, four, five, as much as possible, that know about the financial systems, okay? Um, well, some tools to finance that we write down here uh, is the crowdfunding that everybody knows. Uh, the crowdfunding, you have several possibilities to um, to build it. You can uh, just uh, put it on your own web, so all the fees that, that you will pay if you contract through other platform, you will avoid them. You won't pay fees because you will have it forever as a tool. Or uh, if, for example, you are going to use it just punctually, you can use uh, one of different platforms that give you the possibility to use as a crowdfunding. Here in Spain, we have like several, Migrano de Arena, uh, eh, Bercami. It depends on what you want to finance, uh, you can use them. And then in the, in the bibliography, we uh, send you also um, all the several uh, platforms that you can use it to set up last uh, agro funding. Uh, personal microcredits. So uh, personal microcredits, the the bone that I gave you there is like a person here, okay. Uh, it's like a personal microcredit. Uh, the person give you a donation, uh, no, a microcredit, and then when you get the electoral uh, grant or whatever, you can give them the money back. And merchandising, well, we write it down here because the merchandising really is not to get more, it's more to get visuality than the founds. To sell a t-shirt or, uh, I don't know, we in Valencian Comú, we sell we sell uh, umbrellas. The, <laughs> the marching was not really, <laughs> was not really <laughs> high was not really high, but at least it was really visual. <laughs> so electoral grant also, uh, economic donation, and, <laughs> and this one, it's um, just, yeah, it was like a joke. If you have, I, I was really, I, I was really quickly, but if someone has any questions, I think you. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, like uh, the microcredits, how how big they were. I guess they were different, but like, what's the actual sum that people gave? And because that's pretty, you know, when you're going to pay them back, like how much it really is, uh, practically. Uh, yes, I wanted to ask about um, okay, quotas in Spanish, so I don't know the word in English. Uh, because we are, as we are an association, like a traditional one in Poland, uh, even in the law, it's there we collect money from our um, members. So, and it's not on the list, so I wanted to ask if Barcelona and Comu collected ever some money from members and Okay, if not, then the other question is not <laughs> valuable. Someone else want to ask? What does it mean, the, the last thing? I could, didn't get the, the passing yeah, the guard. Okay. okay. <laughs> so we, we answer, yeah. <laughs> see, see. We are, you want to, yeah? Uh, well, maybe going. <laughs> Uh, 
also you can you can play with words okay for example uh, the, the anarchist movement uh, normally to finance themselves they go to banks not to to ask for money just to take the money they say but this is robbery no they call expropriation so if you work with the words so okay uh, the last question we don't have a members membership uh, fee in any of these new parties we understand that the uh, paying or not a, a fee should not be a limit to participate in the process and in the decision taking uh, process. So, and that's why we are, we say we are a tool for the whole society and not only for the, the members. Even though you must uh, increase uh, these uh, fees and have a policy because this is an important part to ensure your independency, financial independency. Uh, and uh, the first one, the microcredits. Maybe I start by saying it's not the same in every country. In Spain, the uh, electoral costs are reimbursed a few months uh, after the, the elections. This is uh, supposed to increase the transparency because everybody has a, an in a incentive to show all the bills. We had uh, troubles with increasing limits with uh, black money, but uh, in in the country in the in the past, uh, but uh, this is uh, how we could uh, bypass this uh, trouble of not uh, having a credit because the rest of the parties they have like 10 millions the first day of the campaign in their banks, uh, and they, it's easier to plan like that. Uh, we have uh, more difficulties just to start raising money at that uh, at that time, and all the financial planning is more difficult. Uh, but we were able, uh, well, with the crowdfunding in the European elections, we were not so known, but uh, we raised 135,000 euros, and with that we were it was enough to make an 8% in the. European elections, but for the national elections, uh, the nationwide local elections, for three consecutive uh, elections, we were able to raise two million euros only with uh, microcredit. It was like a bazooka uh, for, for us. It worked so, so great. And it, in, in one case, it was perfect that the reimbursement came just at the same time as the next campaign was uh, starting. So uh, we gave the, pos the possibility to people to re-register uh, uh, re again uh, for the next elections, and then we got directly like 40% of the money back from the first day, and that was fantastic because it's really a travel to plan financially your expenses uh, during the, the campaign. No? Um, I don't know, I think this was the biggest innovation proper, uh, probably. Yeah. We have one more block. Uh, it's, uh, no? yeah, uh, it's answer, no? Your question. Ah, uh, uh, bueno, and the, and the limit, and the limit is ten thousand euros. Is from fifty euros to ten thousand. You can sign a microcredit. Uh, it's uh, important to say that it has a, a very high uh, bureaucratic uh, burden because you need to go to uh, the, to make a tax declaration for each uh, one, you need to, well, several declarations, uh, the banks and so on. And the 10,000 is the same limit we use for donations. There is no limit uh, legally. We could uh, have 100 million uh, for one person if we want. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we limit ourselves. No? Uh, with the movement and also we compromise ourselves to get back the money within within two years I, th I thought the one and a half and we did we return the money back I, I was part of the group that wrote the, those terms is just to be safe because normally it's repaid in six months but uh, we didn't know in advance exactly the date that's why and maybe um, one important thing I forgot uh, we offer no interest is zero percent. Uh, it's not about the, that, and, and it's only it's only for electoral uh, expenses, uh, not for the regular functioning. And we have no interest, and it's not for the functioning of the party. We don't want to make up a pyramidal scheme. <laughs> yeah, as you understand. Uh, I 
Yeah, we are running out of time, and we have still the last block. So maybe if you allow me, um, I need to run a bit uh, fast. Ah, uh, yeah. If I answer, yeah, we, we move on, but I, I must say one thing. I, I say one thing, there is one uh, clear condition, it must be illegal. And this uh, leave no trace, there is black money actually uh, in, a, in a minor scale. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then it, there is another discussion of how you can uh, employ other uh, social economy tools. But uh, that's, I leave it uh, if you don't mind. Uh, let's go to, to account, uh, accountability. And uh, let's see, uh, you have a very good point, I, I have to say. First is public uh, procurement. Uh, should be public, online, updated, everyone. If I'm honest, uh, um, I cannot speak for everyone, but this is probably one of the things where we are less developed and it's more difficult to implement. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's completely right that you must uh, have uh, and be able to explain what is your selection process uh, uh, internally. So two times or two, two part of pro procurement or uh, uh, if, uh, if you allow me. So one is like the personal uh, uh, staff and the other thing is the contracts. No? And we, uh, well, at least I speak for Podemos, we are not at the level that uh, we should be. It's important that uh, for big uh, uh, purchases, uh, it should be at the same time flexible and able to, uh, to have, uh, um, you, you need to be able to, you know, to, to buy uh, things or little things, but uh, for big uh, contracts, you should uh, put more uh, publicity and uh, competition, uh, for sure. Um, accountability, open log record of all meetings uh, for politicians and appointee, list of calls, uh, emails. Uh, for the, uh, the first one, uh, even if we are uh, uh, hoping that in the law is actually we have a good uh, lobby uh, regulation that we don't have in this country yet, uh, we apply ourselves some of the methods. It's like, if you put in my calendar, it's like, a, this is an example. No, it's la de la izquierda igual, la pestaña de la izquierda. No, la pestaña, no, a la derecha, una más a la derecha. This is, uh, for instance, this is uh, my page. Uh, well, would you see all the MPs uh, there and so on. And we have uh, an open calendar and we offer that. If you go up uh, and then we, uh, we use it, that at on the right, this is a beta buzón. No, uh, it's difficult for you. Yeah, um, buzón. Uh, this is a beta uh, uh, because there is a question later is uh, how you communicate with uh, MPs. I think you can organize, um, we have sometimes monthly meetings uh, or after the plenary sessions where you can meet the uh, people and ask their questions and so on, but it's also uh, gra uh, great to have a direct uh, uh, link with uh, people. And this is a beta version because uh, I wanted that we are able to have encrypted uh, communications uh, with people. I'm also working in the Committee Against Corruption and you have whistleblowers and it's important especially to protect them, not uh, uh, so much ourselves. We are as a public uh, officers, well, we have more protections, no? so to say. Uh, and then, well, here, if you go to donaciones, donaciones uh, uh, well, uh, actually, well, you have more idea about the salary, how much we keep, uh, how much uh, we donate, and all the stuff. No, this is a way of being accountable also towards uh, the public. Um, I take another one, Disi uh, disciplinary process. Clear processes for members to hold leaderships and themselves uh, accountable. I think it was you and it's an extremely good point because it's also something that uh, we have seen that is quite difficult. Why? Because uh, one, once one person is elected, uh, is not a, 
uh, uh, doesn't have any obligations toward the party. This is a problem in the implementing the code of e uh, ethics uh, because the, this seat belongs to the person. And I don't know in your countries, but in our countries, there are some guarantees that nobody can influence the actions of the uh, elected members. And therefore, this sort of discipline is uh, difficult. You can have in some uh, fines, sometimes in parliamentary uh, groups. But uh, in our case, just think uh, our situation. Uh, I am I'm earning like 2,100 euros a month as member of Podemos because I give the, uh, the donation. The worst sanction against me is to expel me from Podemos. And then I will, the next day, I will earn 3,500 euros. <laughs> I will earn more money if they <laughs> keep me out. And that's a problem for uh, discipline. And that's a problem also when you appoint somebody in an, in an institution, you can have also the code of ethics, uh, ethics that they must uh, contribute also. Uh, but I mean, there are some labor laws also that you, you cannot hire people just like that. Uh, and th there are some limits uh, to discipline. And then internally, well, you have the, the, the guarantee commission that uh, can take uh, actions or take out the membership of the party and other sort of uh, discipline. No? But this is uh, it's difficult. And I don't know what is, uh, is the perfect uh, solution because I wouldn't like to have less, uh, less guarantees that the elected members are actually uh, behaving in good conscience. Uh, no? um, the, the thing, uh, accountability, clarify where the decisions are built, where the decisions are taken. Also a great point, because normally we talk um, a lot of uh, things about the uh, numbers, but we don't talk about the decisions uh, where and uh, they have been uh, made. I think it's, uh, it's important, and this is part of your party bylaws, uh, which are the uh, co uh, competences of the different organs internally, which uh, decisions uh, they can have. Um, but also one measure also in transparency is uh, that uh, we are doing, not perfectly to be honest, but that uh, we are doing uh, is uh, to publish the, um, the, the protocol of the, I don't know, the executive meetings or the council uh, meetings. And I think at least we should be able to publish the agreements within all these uh, public, uh, well, uh, not public, in these uh, private meetings of the, uh, well, the executive of the party or the different organs that, uh, that you may uh, have. Uh, transparency in payments uh, for people. Every knows how much I'm earning in a, uh, in an organization. There is, uh, una pestaña a la derecha, otra abajo. Uh, that's, uh, for instance, uh, all the people hired in Podemos in the central office. Uh, and you have the complete cost, the, like the net uh, salary, uh, and then it's working full time, hard time. Uh, we have a little discussion on a problem also with uh, personal data. Uh, should we really publish the, the names of the people? Uh, well, it's an open discussion, uh, and I don't know, do, do they have the same obligation as a, a elected officer? I don't really think so, no? So uh, for me, uh, personally, it's more important to have a, a really open uh, selection process. And then you can talk about the names and the qualifications of people. But then this to put it uh, on the open in internet, I will be a bit cautious with uh, personal data. No? Um, accountability. Maintain efficient decision making while ensuring full accountability and consultation deliber uh, deliberation uh, in decision making. I'm taking this together with another one, uh, recall politicians who don't delegate uh, the will of the people and no secret uh, meetings. No secret meetings, uh, uh, well, we should have uh, open agendas and, uh, and so on, but also uh, recall politicians that don't delegate the will of uh, people. I think I, I didn't expect that this was like uh, going to fe feature so much in, in this part. But um, we also thought uh, some mechanism in the case of Podemos, we, re we can revoke uh, mandates. It's also taking into consideration what uh, Juan said, that maybe just 
uh, having such so, uh, so, so strong parties it could be a problem, but it can be a political objective that this is in our laws and the, uh, we have a way, no? When it's something I usually say, when we have a, a corrupt uh, politicians, there are at least three uh, agents that should be able to react against that, no? First is like the, the, um, the, the media, the, the sphere of public opinion. Uh, second one is the members of the party. They should be in their interest to take out uh, these people, and then in the third uh, time, it should be the citizens that must have a last resor resort uh, mechanism to uh, spell people that uh, could be really toxic no? <laughs> or corrupt and so on. Um, accountability, public goals, programs, and offer a year, uh, something to summarize what you have uh, achieved, and if not, uh, why. Uh, that's interesting. That's a project you did, I think, in uh, Extremadura, no? Uh, and uh, this is part of the transparency portals uh, in many governments. Uh, we have seen it. I think this is goes more to the institutional side, more than the party side, because then I'm assuming you have won the elections. <laughs> uh, uh, otherwise, you cannot fulfill your program, no? I guess. Uh, uh, <laughs> And then uh, in this uh, uh, transparency webs of the institu institutions, uh, too often is like public uh, relations uh, and communications and marketing, no? But uh, it's true, uh, they had a project where they implement uh, in, in Extremadura. Uh, it's not in uh, our party, <laughs> but uh, still it's interesting because you also must uh, have a very clear uh, methodology on how you count if you have achieved or not uh, things. Yeah, this is based on free software. Uh, it is del dicho al hecho, so from words to act, it's called the, the, the program. And it's made by a Ciudadano Inteligente, Smart Citizen. It is a foundation of uh, hackers in, in Chile. It, it's so interesting and it's, it's really easy to, to build it. So really, we change the colors and do things. <laughs> So uh, the next one is how to foster methods of communication that keep elected officials accountable to the base. I think I answered uh, before, no? It's good to have uh, direct channels, but it's good also to foster some sort of uh, spaces where you can also, uh, well, be accountable <laughs> at the end, no? Uh, for what uh, you do, explain what uh, you have done, and exp explain the, the plans uh, that you have in, in, the, in the future, no? Uh, say how debates on issues such as coalition politics will be managed so that party leaders who might be more instrumental and uh, opposition voices can reach an agreement. I don't know if I understand exactly <laughs> the, this paper, but uh, the thing that uh, for, uh, one other, another thing we do the, in Podemos is that the big decisions must be consulted to all members. So we don't reach an, a, a government uh, agreement or a coalition without having a public uh, consultation. And that's uh, also online. important. Eh? Online. online. Well, online voting, th that's a different topic, how, which method uh, I think you use, and so on. So yeah, maybe to, uh, and, and the last one is just transparent, <laughs> and transparency. And I want to show you an example I'm very proud of, uh, and that's, the not, not yes. uh, if you see, mira, pincha en actos arriba. Bueno, no pincha, no, 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 o pincha en la primera línea. No, 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 hostia, okay. Well, this is an <laughs> interactive where actually you have uh, seen, well, the different expenses that you have, like, uh, uh, I don't know, events, like uh, personal or s staff, like different things, and you can sort, and every time, si pinchas en actos arriba del todo, donde, no, 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 no. Sí, aquí. Entonces, y ahora tiene para abajo. So, as you select these uh, things, no, uh, mueve la pantalla para abajo. La pantalla. Entonces, as you select the uh, things, then you have uh, the different lines uh, below with every detail, and just, y abre la, el justificante, la primera de todas. Well, uh, 
don't know, we are losing maybe too much uh, time. But uh, here, what I want to show you is that we publish 100% of the expenses, uh, really, with the detail. And you can actually open every receipt, every ticket, every invoice. Even if it's a parking ticket of the two euros, you can find it. And this is important also with uh, what I said before of a corruption prevention mechanism. Uh, what, what is our internal control? Every three months, we publish uh, all, 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 all the accounts. Bueno, tienes que ir, te, se te ha abierto en la pestaña de la derecha, tío. Una, and here, eh? and there you have the invoice, 43 euros, is the same thing as, as the other one. And so this is also, uh, uh, first, we allow a public, uh, public audit of uh, our account. And also this is part of the internal control procedure. Every three months, we must uh, clean the, the accounts and put it on, on, on date, and then we publish. We publish, they are uh, people are still able to find if there is a mistake or they have some questions. They, we are really auditable. And then after that, Personal data. Okay. One, just one second to explain the complete uh, cycle. No. So first, uh, you publish. Uh, people can uh, check it. Uh, they can. You may answer questions. You check uh, some uh, controls. At the end of the year, uh, we close all the accounts. We do. We are the only party in Spain that has an external audit. And then all the accounts just perfectly audited and everything just go the final uh, of them also with all the invoices to to the to the web. Um. <laughs> the idea, okay, uh, is it has an administration burden and uh, the highest burden I tell you is to blind the names in the invoices. Actually, we keep two copies, one of the, the original invoice and the second one, the one that can be published. And that's a, a bit uh, of, a, of a job. And yeah, but it's, I mean, do you want to, uh, how important, how important is for you? Is that really a priority? You want to uh, really stand out from the other parties? Uh, my goal and my dream, and I, I know how to do it, uh, but uh, it's not, as pr a, pri a priority as I wish, uh, is to do real-time uh, accounting. And we, uh, all behind that, we establish an accounting system uh, uh, that is open source. Uh, you can find the code or I can give it uh, to you later if you want to install it. And the thing is, is, is used uh, like a, for every uh, position, every item uh, has nine different segments of information. With that, we are able to work in only one huge uh, uh, accounting uh, sheet, so to say, but uh, <laughs> with two E's. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but uh, you can have separate uh, accounting for the different regions uh, using the same a juridical person and the same accounting system. In addition, uh, we had so much uh, work because every parliamentary group needs to have like an independent uh, tax ID number. Uh, so actually in the same system with the same uh, things, we have like 30 different uh, um, um, tax numbers. Uh, of different the, the different things, but the good thing is to work all together uh, at the same time. First, for the work and the administrative uh, burden, you can distribute it quite well uh, in the different regions, in the different territories, also in the in the parliaments. So that's uh, okay. If you have one or two persons to do that, it's impossible, and and they will commit suicide <laughs> at the end. Uh, I tell you, uh, uh, yeah. No, but we don't publish uh, 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 personal data. And we are doing a public activity that is very legitimate and so, but it has some uh, string attached. And you must be ready to explain what you do, and especially with your money.
uh, we have some discussions about transparency when we say, well, should the companies publish all the offer and the technical offer? It's like, well, if you want to compete in this sector, which maybe you have, uh, if you don't want this, Maybe there are other uh, business or the, in other place. No, I think that's uh, legal. Well, I mean, but it's difficult. I don't know if this was this magic uh, times so where everything was booming and we, we could accomplish anything. But it was amazing that the uh, that we. Uh, we put in, in place the, the accounting system in like two, three months. Uh, we didn't pay any license. We had to pay consultancy fees, but maybe it was 10, 15,000 uh, euros uh, in the first uh, six months. That's uh, nothing. Just go to SA uh, SAP or <laughs> any of these big uh, uh, companies. Uh, they, you will pay like uh, 2,000 euros only for a day of consultancy. <laughs> uh, and we were able, also, there is also a community the, uh, of uh, open source uh, politics and IT guys who uh, really make things uh, possible because it's more than business, no? Uh, and that's also, that's also a point why we could do it uh, uh, cheaper. Uh, we're out of time, no, Almo? To, to details, for, for most of the things that they have sh uh, shown, there is free software. Indeed, for example, in Barcelona, in Comun, use uh, open spending, it is very similar. And in the case of uh, this portal of Podemos, the, the first version was, was made for, for us, it's interesting, it's not free software, but it's public. And you know, you can download the code, all the graphics, all the things, and put your data on it. So there is ways that uh, you, know, you don't have to rebuild all the all the the work. Indeed, we will put in, in the document. Should I participate? Okay. Oh no, 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 no. Because there is a different thing that is participa. That is uh, sorry. Is uh, where we keep all the our personal data, the login, the p uh, online voting, the uh, the the periodical collaborations. We don't have membership fees, but uh, you can uh, establish how much you want to pay every month, every six months, or whatever. Uh, all this data with also notifications, uh, with also the version for the mobile app, this is in open source and this is published also. And this is the core actually of uh, the participation. For accounting and everything, I think you will need much more uh, adaptation. But also the uh, accounting system be behind is an open ERP, Odoo. It's an uh, open source uh, um, tool as well. Just I, I think we are like uh, out of uh, time, no? Or wherever. Just to, <laughs> well, okay. So just allow me to review quickly uh, the, what we have seen. So this is uh, the ambit, but the uh, accountability affects to whom? Internally, elect, uh, elected uh, officials, uh, you can have also uh, to, uh, tools to revoke them uh, or not. Uh, we have, we talk about the discipline, how difficult it is. The decision ma making is, is so important and it must be uh, there. And also, well, you can have, this is a legal obligation now in Spain to have a sort of internal auditor. For the citizen, what we have for the accounts, I think is a change in the mindset and the way you work. If you can publish it, you shouldn't do it. Everything that we do should be published, or will be published. So if it's for you <laughs> difficult to explain why you have done that, hmm, maybe uh, you shouldn't do it. Uh, and that's the best uh, uh, control mechanism. No? Uh, it's difficult to be always on time exactly every three months and publish uh, periodically. And it can have some backlashes uh, if you don't do it. And that's a difficult one. Uh, truthful and verifiable uh, after it's audited it should be like that it should be accessible what you have seen before in this interactive is all the expenses of the party in one year uh, in one uh, in one view so that I think is accessible uh, then the use of open 
uh, open source, open source uh, format as much as uh, you can. Transparency, sometimes it's like you must publish, I don't know, one thing, and you publish a PDF in 300 pages, and maybe you accomplish the uh, formal obligation, but not the material uh, uh, obligation to actually explain. No? And then uh, it should be uh, treatable or uh, uh, recycled and reused uh, by others. Tenemos bastante español ahí. Uh, then the legal compliance, obviously, you report to the court of ac accounts, you report to the tax office, all the stuff should be uh, good. The control mechanism is what I said. I think this complete uh, cycle of uh, publishing provisional data and actually later doing an external audit uh, and so on, that provides for a really internal control uh, me mechanism. Uh, um, a ver, dale, no lo, no lo dejo. Um, well, and that's, I think we have seen it. Um, but I think it's, I leave it uh, like that. I don't know if there is uh, other questions or anything. late, so please just take a paper of these and write down all your contact details and we send, send it to you, all the document. Also, adding all your uh, contributions, of course. <laughs> thank you very much for coming and also thank you very much for the colleagues from Barcelona in Comú that have organized it. <laughs>